Welcome back to the Handy Landlord. We're going to install a kitchen sink. Holy smokes, that looks good. The first step we have to do is uh, shut off the water and start removing this mess here. They're already shut off. These are quarter turn shut offs. Be cautious when you are shutting these off. Just make sure that you know where your main shut off is for your whole house just in case one of these fails or something goes wrong. If you don't know, I'm a landlord that does about 90% of my own repairs. Put gloves on or some, si some sort of gloves. Just, you never know what's in these drains. Go ahead and remove this one. I like to start with the drain. Get the drain out of the way and then you can remove the supply lines. Now don't bring this up here on top and then dump it in the sink. Uh, I've done that. I've done Next, you want to remove both your hot and your cold water lines. I always like to support the valve, especially if you have CPVC or something like that. And once you loosen it up, you can normally remove it the rest of the way with your hands. like that you will get a little bit of water out of here all right just support that valve easy easy done boom water is disconnected next you remove all the clips all these clips all the way around the sink Double check to make sure that you have all of the clips out. You can run a razor blade on the underside of the sink to start freeing it up. They put a bunch of caulk here on this front edge to uh, do whatever they were doing there. I'm not really sure. All right, very convenient. This sink actually is designed with a handle. It has a handle built in for easy removal. Let's keep working it out. gonna clean up this edge with a utility knife. All right, so now that you have the kitchen sink out and you have all the area around it cleaned, now it's time to figure out if you measured correctly and you bought the right sink. Wow, 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 that's nice. All right, so before you start mounting this down, go ahead and do yourself a favor. Go ahead and put your basket strainers in Put your faucet in and put your stopper in and then set your sink. But go ahead right now and make sure that it does fit and that it's not too loose or anything like that. This one fits good. If you have not seen my video on how to remove stuck basket strainers and you are just trying to replace your basket strainer, go check that out. I'll put it linked down below. Pop that off to the side. Take these two, set them off to the side. Take the top piece, get yourself some plumber's putty. What you want to do is roll yourself out about a quarter, quarter inch bead. You just want to have enough on there so that it can smash out. You can see I don't have enough on there. You don't need a massive amount of me. So, so what I'll do is I'll just grab a little bit more. I'll fill in that gap and just fill in that little gap right there. Boom, just like that. Take this piece, the rubber piece. Now, this is maybe a controversial thing. I have no idea. This is why I wear gloves too, just for this reason. Now, I just take it, rub it around on this gasket. I think it just creates a better seal too. Not that it's where the seal is actually happening. The seal is actually happening at the plumber's putty. This just helps. Just a personal thing that I do. So now take this from the underside. 
get this out of the way. I'm just kind of uh, working it into place. And then I like to remove the extra plumber's putty and then take rubber gasket, doesn't matter which side, put that down, paper gasket. It comes with the cardboard against the rubber like that. Then you take this piece, pop that bad boy on. Now you take your nut, screw your nut on. Just like that. Woo! What you'll do is check inside of here, run your finger around, kind of remove the excess, kind of get it centered up, just like that. I'm not even sure with this type of basket strainer if you even need this tool. It seems to be that that center is spinning. So maybe somebody's a plumber that's watching this and can tell me if I need to even install that or use that sink and basket tool. I know with the uh, basket strainers with the larger nuts that you do have to use that tool in order to hold it. But these don't seem to be moving much. So so you're almost good without it. Alright, like that, snug it up some more here on the back, righty tighty, lefty loosey, alright, woo, that is looking good, I'm just going to double check, make sure they're both tight. Dump all the old plumber's putty out on your brand new carpet and then stomp it in. So what you want to do now, just run your foot over all that, smash it in real good into the new carpet. So then you have a bunch of problems getting it out. All right, I had to do some research. Um, I flipped this one over, seems to be the same one. Uh, it looks like the washer goes on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply maybe a little bit of silicone there on the top. Let's fish this up from the underside, just like your washer on there and then put your nut on there sixteen inch supply lines are not going to reach but I normally at this point would install both of the supply lines before I install the faucet but I'm gonna go ahead and install the faucet so this one you're gonna need a long long thin cord of plumbers putty light share do all that everybody tells you to do that I'm not I don't care what you do do whatever you want so yeah smash this down that's probably way too much it is what it is I don't I mean you could have went with a smaller bead but this is life it's not perfect i hate watching those videos that guys are so perfect on them so it's like how'd you do that how many takes did it take for you to get that perfect like that this is way too much i mean you just need a little bit you just need enough to smash down so that it creates that seal and then go ahead and pop this bad boy back on the faucet just like that now i'm going to feed it up through the bottom just like that and throw your nuts on you also want to do is make sure the faucet is straight and as centered as you can get it the faucet with one hand use your tool tighten up don't go crazy definitely can crack these nuts and i've done it just like that and now you are going to have a bunch of stuff squeeze out and then my faucet is crooked. So yeah. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this one up a little bit. And then just slightly. Push it, push it so it's straight. Make sure both sides are tight. Just get all of the extra plumber's putty off there. Make sure you throw it in the carpet. Your wife will love you. Finally at the point to put the sink in. Holy smokes, that looks good. All right, next step. Gotta put these clips that come with the sink in from the underside. 
they go like this and then this catches in the edge of the sink and then this catches on the countertop and goes right up there just like that and holds the sink in. Dynaflex DAP 230. Finally at the point to put the sink in. Yeah, don't mess this up. I probably will. Just like that. I've put all these uh, black clips together uh, on the underside of the sink. Right here is about how I lay them out. All right, so right here is how they go. Uh, this little uh, mushroom type shape thing uh, goes right. You guys are going to be able to see that. So it goes right in there. I put them all together so that I can slide them. You can see that. Let's see, I'll see how that just went in there. just like that sometimes the fronts can be a little tricky because um, just depends on how your cabinet and countertop are basically I hold it with one hand and then tighten it up with my other which really stinks that they're flatheads so I went around and tightened up every single one of them this is on the underside of the sink looking up. We have this caulk that's still around here. What I like to do is take the wet paper towel and get all of the excess off. So just make sure that your paper towel is extremely wet. Fold it over on itself. Just go down through there. Don't worry about the spots that aren't hit. Come back and get those later. So yeah, and then take a dry paper towel and run down through there. And that's a good start to a good seal though because you have caulk underneath here. Even though I've missed a few spots, I mean the majority of it's hit.